beautiful patchwork quilt of Mancunian delight that you are. I want you right now to give yourselves an enormous round of applause. Oh, come on, have you got no self-respect? Yes, I am looking at you. Give yourself the beans, for Christ's sake. Come on! one day like this and some of you old buggers are getting two today which is marvellous the weather's held off the roof is firmly moored we are going to have the second best night of our entire lives that's how it's gonna go and that is the end of it now essentially I'm gonna talk to you for a couple of minutes before bringing on uh, the first of your musical main courses for this evening, we're going to have a quick break. And yes, yes, they're coming, madam. <laughs> they are definitely going to show up. You're, you're, right, you're in the right place, honestly. Look around. <laughs> There's a certain theme going on with the T-shirts, you silly bugger. Is it James? Is it? Uh, something you'll notice about me, oh, I have the ability to blend in seamlessly with my environment, <laughs> wherever I go. I feel an energy, I match it, we become as one. So who have we got down at the front here? The eager boomers, the early ones. Hello sir. Good lord, you are all muscle and spit you, aren't you? <laughs> Pardon? What's your name, you adorable angel? Mike. Mike! I love this! Bucket hat and a walking stick. That's how you do it. That is how you do it, Dad. Mike, you, my friend, are a 10. In Scrabble. Three, one, five, one. His surname is Hunt. I love coming here to Manchester. Um, I have to be honest. The feeling isn't always reciprocated. I was walking through town earlier on and some chap summoned my attention in the following manner. <clears throat> oh, man! Mercury wearing a kimono. Now, this chap opened the interaction with the words, Oi mate, our eyes met. I was the mate, case closed. Right? And then he said, Why is Freddie Mercury wearing a kimono? I looked around, there was nobody else there. I was persons one and two in the rhetorical question. So, obviously, grammatically, I was on the back foot. But I wasn't going to put up with any baloney. You can't. You can't put up with baloney. You know what it's like, Mike. You've been in prison. <laughs> uh, honestly, you don't get that thousand-yard stare from Nessie. No, you'd see me far gone. You would have been proud of me, Mike, I swear to God. Oi, mate. Why is Freddie Mercury wearing a kimono? I summoned up every ounce of testosterone in my body and I fired it ocularly at this man. Ocularly? madam, yes. Uh, it means let me fucking eyes look. Uh, I summoned up every ounce of testosterone in my body, fired it ocularly at this chap. And I said, I think you'll find that this is a smoking jacket. <laughs> And do you know what he said back to me? These were his exact words. Mate, I'm not gay. <laughs> Mate, I'm not gay. I never met this man. I don't know if every time he got something wrong, he felt obliged to point out something he wasn't. <laughs> hey, mate, that bun. Is that the Stone Roses? No, no, that's the Charlatans. All right, mate, I'm not a vegan. <laughs> Very hard to know. Something I do want to talk about, though, 
and this is a very important issue. I have no idea, Manchester, that it is not a level playing field for you ladies. And never, but madam, I'm ashamed to say I only recently found out through a series of books called The Mr. Men. <laughs> Vile, sexist propaganda. The author Roger Hargreaves, filthy misogynistic pig, do you know what he called the female counterparts? Little Miss. Patronizing. It gets worse. Every little miss is the villain of her own story. You've got Little Miss Naughty. She's going around being naughty. What did they expect? It's a name, it's a job. She's carrying on like a tiny purple Liam Gallagher. <laughs> the Mr. Men don't like that. They form a court, a kangaroo court. They have Mr. Strong grab a nose to stop her. And it works. And the moral of the story from Roger Hargreaves, women know your place. Women it gets worse. It gets worse. The entire storyline of Little Miss Chatterbox, beginning, middle, end. Quiet love, men are talking. <laughs> that is the whole book. Little Miss Neat leaves her house. It's perfect. Perfect. While she's away, Mr. Muggle comes in, uninvited, and attempts to make himself a cup of tea during the process of which he ruins the entire place and then leaves. Never punished in the story at any point. Little Miss Neat comes back and has to tidy everything up herself. And that is the end of the story. Yes. And the moral of that one from Roger Hargreaves, men should never have to make the tea. Yes. It seems very much to me that every time Roger Hargreaves had an argument with his wife, a brand new Little Miss character was created. <laughs> You've been to the shops, darling. Did you remember my pipe tobacco? No? Don't worry about it. It's alright. I'm going to get on with my work. Little Miss Forgetful. I mean, madam. Could you imagine in your relationship if every mistake you made was translated by your husband into 86 different languages and published around the world? Little Miss Paranoid as fuck. <laughs> And what about the men? What about the Mr. Men? Mr. Perfect? Mr. Happy? Mr. Strong? Where's Mr. Afraid of Commitment? Where is Mr. Emotionally Unavailable? Where's Mr. Where's Mr. Passive Aggressive? I'll tell you where he is. He's writing the damn book. That's where he is. And the less said, ladies and gentlemen, about Mr. Tickle. This is a direct extract from that book. Sitting in his house at the other side of the woods, he laughed and laughed every time he thought about all the people he had tickled. <laughs> Good Lord, that's practically Prince Andrew's biography for Christ's sake. <laughs> There's something else that's very important I need to bring up. Before we progress, the first of our two bands tonight, and it's a plague that's sweeping the country, known as imposter syndrome. I don't know if you know, an imposter is somebody that pretends to be somebody else for some form of gain, financial or otherwise. Now, who would do that? <laughs> what kind of broken shell of a person would hide their true nature behind a prefabricated facade. Do you know what the answer is? Nearly everybody in Britain. Nine out of ten people in Britain suffer from imposter syndrome. It's a sense you don't deserve what you have, you're not entitled to what you've earned, and you are just not good enough. Ninety percent of British people. The other ten percent were privately educated. <laughs> oh, those buggers don't get imposter syndrome. You think Boris Johnson has imposter syndrome? You don't lead the... Yes, madam, I'm getting to that. You don't lead the country in an ego-driven, two-year-long, blindfolded can-can through a minefield, stopping only to machine-gun money at your friends before going back to a flat, 
to celebrate the fact that you can carry on your bloated, masturbatory Winston Churchill fantasy at everybody's expense by changing the rules as you go along. Do any of you honestly think that man is sitting there plagued with self-doubt? I'm telling you right now he's not. Do you know what he is doing? He's saluting himself in his Laura Ashley mirror, naked, windmilling probably. <laughs> or at the very least, enthusiastically slamming himself from thigh to thigh. Everything moving in opposite directions at the same time. Much like what he says and what he does. The elites do not get imposter syndrome. Do you know who else doesn't get it? Imposters. They don't get their own syndrome. An imposter with imposter syndrome is just self-aware. No, the only people that get imposter syndrome are the hard-working people who care about what they do and have a moral responsibility at the job that they have. Is this resonating with anybody here in the crowd tonight? Is there anybody here who has a job with a great deal of moral responsibility? What do you do, madam? You're a what? You work for the NHS, right. So, obviously you're dealing with patients. Every action you undertake has potential huge ramifications for the people that you deal with on a daily basis. Not just them, their friends and family. One wrong step, it could be an absolute disaster. You have an off day, there could be a nightmare outpouring of negative after effects. And I imagine, madam, the worry of that keeps you awake some nights. Yes. I am going to vaccinate you against imposter syndrome right now. Yes. Imposters, madam, do not get imposter syndrome, correct? No. Here's what you do. Next time you're on the way to the hospital, do a left instead of a right, find the nearest B&Q and just start working there. <laughs> and I don't mean go through a formal applications process. I mean you march into that staff room with the energy of the three bears. Do you hear me, madam? Who's been drinking out of my coffee mug? Am I fuck doing a double on Sunday, mate? <laughs> Nobody will question you. They'll just think, Oh, good Lord, the new girl's a bit fiery. <laughs> I want you to keep that energy going. March onto the shop floor. Grab a high-vis off a coat peg. Start advising customers on hammers, screws, lawn mowers. Keep going until security finally realise that you do not work there. Madam, do you know what will give you away? The fact that you are helping people in a B&Q. <laughs> they will see that. And they'll think, this isn't right. And they'll throw you out, heap on the floor. And what I want to do, I want you to do there, madam, is make a note of that feeling, go back to the position that you've earned, the job you're entitled to, and stop being such a wet bag of shit. <laughs> that goes for anyone with imposter syndrome. The only reason that you get this is because you're good at your job. You silly buggers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like we've gathered, I feel like we have the right amount of energy are we ready yes. for the music to start? Yes. No, I'm not having that. I'm sorry, Castle Phil Bow. If we're travelling back in time, I also need that to apply to your energy levels, you bugger. Are you ready? Yes. I hadn't finished. second act, madam, is coming, but the way numbers work, the second act can only be the second act after the first act has happened. Chill your fucking boots, love, all right? Are you ready for your first act? This band are tremendous. They are currently supporting. Trust me, they will not be supporting for much longer. Start the applause!